process in your body. When you raise kundalini, the secretion that you raise, which is the saving seed, travels along the spine. There is a channel on the spine that has spinal fluid. That spinal fluid, when it is processed, there is a channel on the spine that has spinal fluid. That spinal fluid, when it is processed of higher quality atoms and, and, and nutrition, becomes the River Jordan. Now, if you understand the word or, G-O-R-D-A-N, you understand that ore is a precious substance. Okay? That precious substance goes up to the, 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 the spinal column, which is the River Jordan, and empties into the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is the pneumo plexus that is right here around your what? What's this? Solar plexus. This is the sun plexus where Bethlehem, this is where the Son of God is born. Here, in this center right here, your solar plexus the pneumogastric uh, ganglia. When you raise this seed up, and the seed becomes qualified, it becomes crucified or crucified at the mount of the skull, which is Golgotha. Golgotha means place of the skull, just like Calvary means place of the skull. The crossing of the two Thieves, where you see Jesus was crucified between two thieves. The two thieves represent the two nerves of the sympathetic nervous system, the Ida and the Pingala. So when you see these two thieves talking to Jesus, those are the ones that would steal your energy, the seed back, steal the light of the seed back, and throw it back down and turn it into a pillar of salt. Where did you hear that story from? Lot. Where do you think Lot came from? Lotus. The top of the brain is called, that part that opens up after the kundalini raises, is called the lotus petals. The thousand petal lotus. That's your brain. That's the part that opens up when the kundalini rises and opens up the lamp of God, or lights the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. If you are dealing with sexuality, like you want to look back and deal with Gomorrah and Sodom and all that shit, that's, you're dealing with that. If you look back or you change the energy going back downward, then it changes back to the essential minerals that it was constituted of, and you give life on the planet Earth rather than the life up here in heaven. So Lot's wife looked back, essentially the energy, the, 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 the material that was being brought up the spine, looked back in sexuality and turned back to the essential components. So Lot's wife is the lotus stem. Follow me and keep up with me. Neo is plugged into the medulla oblongata. This is where the Ida and the Pingala crosses at the base of the skull, at the mount of skull. The material, which is like unrefined oil, goes up and is crossified by electromagnetic energies from the Ida and the Pingala. At that point, crucifixion doesn't mean to kill, it means to increase. So at this point, at this point when that seed reaches that cross at the base of the skull, the specific material that was being brought up by Kundalini is refined at that area and increased. In other words, from crude oil to gasoline. Now it goes straight to the particular part where it begins to trill and activate the pituitary, and then after that, the pineal gland. Now, when that particular thing was stuck in his medulla oblongata, immediately a whole other world opened up. It opened up to any potential he wanted. Remember what he said, Neo awakens, or is the one, the eye awareness is increased. Remember, his awareness of self increased as soon as he stuck that thing into his medulla oblongata. Morpheus says he is experiencing a residual self-image. The residual self-image is essentially of his past lives, of all the things that he was, is, and will be, or any potential that he can be. A mental projection of his digital self. Morpheus asks, what is real? Remember he asked me, he says, is this all real? Morpheus says, well, what is real? How do you define real if you are talking about what you can touch what you can smell or you can taste, then real is just simply electrical signals that you can interpret with your brain. Now let's freeze that right there. Essentially, that's what the overlords, that's what the fallen lords have done to you. They have created a world of sensuality so that you now 
think that reality is based upon the sense messengers that send specific types of chemicals to your brain. So reality is being constantly turned over in your brain based upon the food they feed you and the specific appetites they create which creates the sensations that give you your reality. The movies you go and look at and the feelings you get from looking at the screen create certain energy dynamics inside of your brain and inside of your head so that you now have a composite reality that you're functioning under. Check. Yes. Neural interactive stimulation is the matrix living in a dream world neural interactive stimulation <clears throat> that is exactly what they are doing to you neural interactive stimulation every time you participate in education every time you participate in sports every time you participate in the food the way you eat in any kind of recreation the music you listen to they are playing with the neurons in your body they are playing with the nervous system to create appetites to create sensual ceilings let me get that to you one more time. They create a sensual ceiling whereby your senses now act as the shutdown mechanism to see beyond where you are. Your senses are taught to block any higher energies from coming through or your ability to access higher energies. Because when you deal with the senses, you deal with lower components. Morpheus said, man became like unto his creator, created artificial intelligence that spawned an entire race of artificial beings, a singular consciousness. Now, what were we talking about in part one, except the fact that they are beginning to spawn a whole other race of man? This is what we're talking about when they're dealing with the kind of mind control that we're dealing with today. The kind of mind control that we're speaking about in this little folio. Now y'all may think this is just a little bit, a little something that I put together here, but I made sure that everything I put in here puts little components enough for you to go and find the rest of the information. Get Matrix 2. And no brothers out there, if you can get, uh, um, get the Matrix series from the brothers that are behind there uh, dealing with that, get the Matrix series. But get Matrix 2. 1 and 2 will put you into the groove. It will acclimate you to the kind of things that I'm speaking about. But the artificial intelligence dependent upon solar light to survive. Now check that out. Remember that the artificial intelligence was dealing with solar light. Now what did they do? They went about and blackened the whole sky. Morpheus said that we destroyed ourselves to spite our face. Destroyed the whole planet in order that they may not live. Now, what is this white man doing? Again, you got to remember that the white man's burden is to make sure that he does not become destroyed by the rest of the planet taking him out of existence. Not just by war, but I'm talking about genetic warfare. Fucking him completely out of existence. He knows it. He knows that we can fuck him out of existence. He knows that the black balls hold his termination. All right? Now, that particular thing processes over to his behavioral dynamic. The very fact that he creates these kinds of weapons, he ain't got nobody else to fight. He owns money's mother, so it ain't about the money. Everything that is promoting his behavioral dynamic, everything that is causing him to be who he is, is to survive. He cannot interface and love you because he would disappear if that happened. He is a creature unto himself, and in order to maintain that, he creates technology to keep the distance between the humanity that could destroy him. Humanity cannot become part of his reality. 
That is why in part one I spoke about the fact that they are going to genetically engineer feeling out of the next humanity, or at least the humanity that is going to be the one he wants to interface with. He has to destroy feelings because feelings automatically gravitate you to one another. And he knows that it's a matter of time because he can't outproduce and reproduce you. So he has to restructure a barrier. His technology is his way of keeping the distance between you and himself. That is the illusion. That is the matrix between human dynamics. That is the artificial technology that takes the place of the original technology. You see, because we understood the original technology. When he went over there to these different places, saw all these temples of what he called it, wondered how they worked, couldn't understand why they worked the way they did. He did not understand the dynamics of African melanated technology. It had nothing to do with destroying the planet. It had to do with interfacing with the planet. That takes an enormous amount more intelligence than the kind of technology he is doing. All of this technology is, is obsolete. He is on this particular mad quest called progress. Progress is insanity. Progress is a psychosis. Process, progress is a neurosis. It is a necessity because that's how he has to keep up with keeping you down. The artificial intelligence was, depend intelligence was dependent on solar light to survive. Humanity blackened the sky to destroy them, but these things survived. Morpheus says that throughout the 20th century, man has been dependent on machines. And he said the funny thing and the most ironic thing now is that the tables have turned because the machines are now dependent on man. They grow man like a crop. Frankenstein got out the lair, got out the lab to terrorize its creator, just as God terrorizes man. Why did I say that? God terrorizes man, its creator. Think what I just said. <laughs> Think about it. Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time. Cause you didn't get that. I didn't think I didn't think you got that. All right. Frankenstein got out the lab. All right? And destroyed to terrorize and destroy its own creator. Just as God now got out the lab of man's mind to terrorize him. Right? Now, how did the artificial intelligence survive? The human body generates more bioelectricity than a 120 volt battery and over 2,000 BTUs, that's British thermal units of body heat. Combined with a form of fusion, these machines found all the energy they could ever need generated by the cellular sons of man. Ooh, what did I just say?